Moin Moin and hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Don Boxing. And today uh, I have for you the Fossi Audio PH05. Yes, that is a very unique device and uh, thank you very much for Fossi Audio for sending this device over for review. Much appreciated and I will give my uh, best shout out to see what this thing can and can't do and how useful it actually is in real life. Because uh, what this thing is, is... Not sure if you can see it in the picture here. This has five different knobs and it has five different audio outputs. So this is a very unique device. I don't think I've heard about other, um, uh, let's say more consumer oriented devices that have this type of feature set. Um, honestly, I'm also not in the mixing, mastering or recording business. So um, maybe there are, but at least in the deck amps that I've been seeing so far, this is pretty unique and uh, yeah. Uh, let's see what this actually uh, is looking because I have only seen one picture uh, uh, online so far. So we get a manual here and a power brick which is relatively small like this is definitely on the small side. Um, barrel jack here and oh this is actually way smaller than I expected. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, when I saw the pictures I was like so how big is this like is it like 20 centimeters long or so but this thing is actually very very small like compared to okay i don't have uh, I, unfortunately i cannot get my stack out there um this is a, a topping d53 and a53 but this is kind of as wide as it and a bit smaller than the stack together um, but yes yeah, you can see this has actually five outputs for headphones and an input on this side here and on the back actually you have yeah the power input uh, what i I can already say but I'm not a greatest fan of but the input is also at the front. Um, I would wish the input would be at the back here. That would be just more convenient to set it up somewhere. And I think this might be master volume here and this is individually for each channel. And let's first uh, try and click the on button. Let's see how that sounds. Um, a bit mushy, but totally fine. Um, no problem here. The master volume knob here is relatively smooth, not too much friction. These here have a lot more friction going on. So those are way more accurately to dial in than this one. But also this is not bad. My old stack, the SMSL SU8 and uh, SP200, that volume will definitely has less friction and is less accurate. And um, yeah, let's give each of these rotators a bit of a rotation. Mm. So that's what I have almost expected um, because you have five different volume wheels and this is a piece of metal here. This has a bit of a scratchy to it. Like uh, you can probably not tell if I get it close to the mic. Don't think you will be able to hear it, but this feels scratchy. Why well, this is okay, this is okay. This is fine and this is fine too. This one feels a bit scratchy. Um, but build wise, at least judging from the weight of it, this has actually some heft to it. And yeah, um, honestly, this doesn't feel bad at all. And uh, let's see at the bottom. So I think they actually, this is a pretty smart idea. <laughs> they used the screw holes uh, to also put rubber feet beneath. So that means um, basically this is the same. Uh, uh, let's see, let's check. Actually, it's glued on, so it could just be rubber feet or screw holes. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, these are uh, rubber feet that are glued on relatively well. I just tried to apply it off. It didn't go off. Um, how hot this gets, I'm not entirely sure. I will have to figure out. Um, but the build quality, as I wanted to allude to, actually feels pretty solid. Uh, you can see the material thickness here is about like millimeter, possibly a bit more. Um, so it definitely feels heavy to the hand. And um, yeah. Uh, Let's see what else we got in the box. What was this here? Oh, we also have a audio in cable and that is actually braided. Let's quickly unbraid, uh, un untwist this to see how that's actually going. Um, length is, I would estimate, about one and a half meters. Um, thickness of it is relatively good. Like it has this slight tangliness to it, but oh, actually it's a, a straightable relatively fast. So that's nifty. And uh, yeah, so you should be getting with this device everything that you need to split your audio into five. And uh, the menu also directly starts in English. That's neat. And yeah, this has, according to this, uh, 310 milli ohms of output power at 32 uh, 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 ohms. So that's actually pretty decent. 
especially if you consider that it has five outputs. Um, signal noise ratio 105 decibels. That's not good, but it's okay. Um, dynamic range the same. Uh, total harmonic distortion 0.01%. That's actually pretty all right. Noise floor uh, 20, uh, 25 microwatts. Not entirely sure how much that is, honestly. Um, I like a bit of uh, the knowledge there. 90 decibel of crosstalk is fine, but also not great. And yeah, frequency response is rated for 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, so pretty much all right. Um, yeah, so seems like this is a, a pretty good device, at least from what I can see here in the manual. Seems to be also give you all of the information you need. And yeah, um, this is it for the unboxing. Uh, I will give this in testing and see uh, yeah, what this thing actually can, what it can't do, if it works for IEMs. And yeah, uh, let you know when in my review in possibly like the next few days. That's it. Uh, if you have questions, if you have criticisms, if you have any other feedback, please leave a comment. And with this, don't spectore.